Patterns goes sketching and sculpting seabirds on the Paris Peninsula now with Danny Osborne. The Beira Peninsula in Cork on the southwest coast of Ireland. Danny Osborne was born and educated in England. He studied painting and ceramics in Bournemouth and Poole. He visited Ireland as a student and decided he wanted to settle in West Cork. After qualifying, he worked as a freelance ceramic designer throughout Britain. But by working on the highly paid North Sea oil rigs, he realised his ambition and bought a house on the Beira Peninsula some nine years ago. I always like to have a few animals around the place. This nanny's half British Alpine and the kids three quarter bred. They're good milkers if you keep them fed a little. Being part mountainy goat, they aren't as soft as the purebred. They're nice little things. The house is a bit rough and ready. It hadn't been lived in for 45 years when I bought it. It was in very bad state of repair. But it takes time enough trying to make a living without having to be building all the time. So I've got a nice working system going now. And I only get round to doing something to the house about every couple of years or so. Danny enjoys the isolation, finds it inspiring. Ted Cumber is my nearest neighbour and a great friend. He takes my mail and helps me out in all sorts of ways. And I'm able to do the odd thing for him too. Everyone here needs to be a jack of all trades. The nearest town, Castletown Bear, is a good distance away. <laughs> we got a tray down, boy. As there's no road into the house, I bought Paddy the donkey about eight years ago when he was three. He carries the heavier stuff over from the road. I don't use him for the odd load here and there as it's more trouble than it's worth to catch him. So I wait until there's something which I can't manage myself. Then we do the job. He's a good strong donkey and doesn't mind the work at all. I like to work on the rocks when I can, where the bones of the world are revealed. In fact, Danny likes to spend a lot of time on the seashore, sketching, painting, or fishing with the traditional sapling and string for wrasse and pollock. He likes to paint large, inanimate landscapes. Painting, actually, was his first love and still occupies much of his time. He has had several successful one-man exhibitions.
The other side of my work is making porcelain models of various forms of life, people, animals and birds. I've been making a series of Irish seabirds over the last few years, and for these I like to make a few studies and sketches, just to ascertain the character of the bird, and then work from a dead specimen when I can for accuracy and detail. These bird models I've been making for a commercial company called Irish Dresden, who are producing them now. They're largely for export to America. After many sketches and paintings, Danny starts work modelling the seabirds. He uses plasticine and first makes sure it's warm and supple before he begins to work. He makes a series of small models to look at shapes and poses before settling on one characteristic pose for the final model. After working out the position of the bird on a quick small model, the proper model is constructed of balls of plasticine which get smaller and smaller as the model progresses and it grows out near the finished surface. I always work a quarter scale and take dozens of measurements which are all divided by four and then transferred to the model. It's quite a long process and eventually the balls of plasticine are only as big as pinheads. It takes weeks to make a model of a bird. Every single measurement is logged accurately in a book. Danny is a meticulous craftsman with a hunger for precise detail. He takes about 40 measurements for every model. I went to the Arctic in 1977 to do a series of paintings which made up my second show at the Neptune Gallery in Dublin. I'm going again next year, but this time with the Irish Arctic Expedition 1981 
which is a two-man expedition to the most northern reaches of the Canadian archipelago. I'll be doing a series of paintings as well as a survey of the fauna, in particular the birds. My partner is Dr. Jerry Wardell, who is a physicist. We will be entering some previously unexplored areas and making one long journey, which circumscribes the whole of Grantland on Skidoos. The total contrast with this hemisphere that one gets on the roof of the world puts all my work into perfect context. It's cold and dangerous and alien and a very exciting place to be. As the model takes shape, the plasticine balls get smaller and smaller. They need to be applied with a modelling tool. Danny makes his own from boxwood. Danny works alone, long into the night, for about three weeks, perfecting each model. The next stage in the process takes place in Drumcolliher, County Limerick, headquarters of Irish Dresden. It's a firm which has its origins in Germany hundreds of years ago. Danny has been working with them for seven years now. The factory is owned by the Saar family. I have a very good working relationship with Irish Dresden. They let me use the facilities of the factory for my own work, as well as doing their commissions. When the finishing touches are put onto the model, it's chopped up into its various parts, beak, body, wings, feet and rock. And each piece is cast separately. If the model wasn't cut up, it would be very difficult to extract each reproduction from the mould without breaking it. I use slivers of razor blades which is thin as a hair for cutting the model up. So it's cut into its component parts. Two wings, feet, beak, body and rock. Moulds have to be made now for each individual piece. A bed of clay is built around each piece up to the halfway mark. This will allow a mould of the top half to be taken. The clay is smoothed off. The head is somewhat delicate and may be difficult to extract from the finished mould in one piece because of undercuts. So Danny pre-casts this first in plaster of Paris, which sets very quickly. Soft soap or size is painted over the plaster to 
prevent the main mould from sticking to it. A piece of roofing felt is wrapped round the bed of clay. This shuttering will contain the plaster. These copper cylinders will leave finger holes through the mould to help Danny push out the model. More plaster of Paris is now poured in. It doesn't take long to set. Half the mould is set and has to be cleaned. The mould is turned over and the bed of clay removed. After the plaster has been cleaned, Danny cuts natches, or locks as they are called. This is so that the two moulds will match exactly. These blocks will make it easier for him to remove the model from the mould. Now the whole plaster must be sized or painted with soft soap to stop the two halves sticking together. More plaster of Paris is poured and half an hour later the mould is set. This is now a complete mould for one piece of the model. Exactly the same process is carried out for each of the other pieces which go to make up the finished ceramic. Now the mould can be used to cast a plaster model of the bird. The plaster model, or lump as it is called, is important because it's not until this stage that the really fine detail can be added. Liquid clay, or slip as it is called, is used in making the porcelain models. John Kiley fills the moulds with the slip. When it is dry, the mould is split and the clay figurine is removed. Nick Roach puts all the bits back together again, sticking them with more liquid clay or slip. The support is placed under the gannet's head to prevent it from drooping during the initial firings in the kiln. Each figurine will have to be assembled with the same care.
This process is called forming. Nick Roach carefully tapers the seams and remodels any detail which needs attention. When the pieces are dry, Susie Sar starts the kiln for a biscuit firing, a low temperature firing to make the pieces less fragile. After this, the bases are cleaned and they are put in for a second firing at the top temperature of 2,800 degrees centigrade. James Canaan does the bird and animal painting using ceramic colours. He refers to Danny's original paintings for accuracy. No, no, look last night. Mm -hmm. You seen one all right. Mm -hmm. That was as far as we got. There's a new cocoa pup working. Ah, she's a bit young yet, but she's coming out. Yeah. About six months. Yeah. So I was just a bit worried about the foot, about the blue bands coming around here. But I really make sure it twists around at the right angle. Yeah. Just to get it spot on, because it's quite important the way it meets. Yeah. Just at the feather. Yeah, there's blue lines on the toes. So. And perhaps take the blue just a shade lighter. Yeah. But apart from that, it's going good. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. So. Should be right there. Yeah. The rock's nice now. Yeah, Don't get too heavy on the, on the yellow. Make sure it doesn't come out too heavy in the firing. We altered um, the colour of the head because it was too heavy. Yeah. And I opened the firing so it wouldn't torn down any bit. Yeah. yeah. It should be fine. The paints are oxides mixed with a little silica and are fluxed to make them melt at low temperatures. This final firing only goes to 820 degrees centigrade.
Danny Osborne, a sculptor of precise detail, a painter of vast landscapes, a lover of isolated places. <laughs>